Good morning and welcome to today's session on how to manage the causes of stress. So um, for those of you who, who aren't aware, I'm Jonathan Stobart. I'm, I'm our Head of Marketing and Strategic Partnerships at Accountancy Manager. I'm delighted that Alison's joined us today to, to give a presentation on how to manage causes of stress. I suppose just to give a bit of context to today's session, it, it's outside of our normal realm of of practice management software, but we think it's really important that, um, that we try and provide additional support to our users above and beyond just that of the software that, that we provide. So obviously we, we're trying to increase the number of web webinars that we've been doing recently. Um, this is the first of two webinars we're doing this week. So, um, but this one is of course off topic and, and later one in this week is, is about feature functionality. So just whilst people are still coming into the room, it's good to see great, great numbers coming into the room already. Um, Alison, I suppose over to you really, I'll let you just kind of you know, take, take the lead from here, introduce yourself and, and explain how to manage the causes of stress. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you, first of all, to um, Accountancy Manager for sponsoring today um, and inviting me in. And thank you for everybody who is in the room and other people who are going to be watching us on replay back. So let me, um, I'm just going to share some slides that you should, fingers crossed, be able to see. Bring this up from here. Right. So the other thing that we will be doing is it's an interactive session. So we are going to be using the chat function. So first of all, let's see um, if we put to everyone, then you should be able to use the chat. Hopefully you can say hello. Good morning from Jonathan. Good morning from me. And give me some hellos and let me know who is in the room. Who's in the room? Sonia says hello. Amy Harris says hello. Good morning. Paul's in the room. Oh, look, we're all in the room. Hello from Ian. Hello, Pat. Hello, Helen. Hello, everyone. Good morning, Lee. Good morning. So we will be using the chat function. The other thing that we will be doing is we will be using a tool called menti.com. So if you've got another tab on your browser open or if you've got your phone, then we will be doing some little surveys to see what's going on in the world of stress and how we can help reduce it. So first of all, who am I? Um, I'm Alison Edgar, MBE. I got an MBE on the 2020 birthday honours list for the work that I do for entrepreneurship and business. Originally, my background is from corporate sales. So I know a lot of you in the room will be from the bookkeeping and accountancy world. So I make the sales and you guys count the money. We love that. It's a, a match made in heaven. Um, so I also uh, I've written a couple of books. The first one is Smash It, The Art of, uh, sorry, second one is Smash It, The Art of Getting What You Want. The first one is Secrets of Successful Sales. So for me, I'm actually dyslexic as well. So I've had to overcome a lot of adversity to be able to write two books. And with adversity, sometimes comes stress. So what I've done, especially in Smash It, um, we look at different techniques on how you set your goals and how you work with your clients and how you understand people. So that's what we're going to be covering today. So I did mention that we were going to do something which was interactive. So if you can go to menti.com, you'll see it on the screen now, www.menti.com. -E and then if you can enter the code six, sorry, nine six, told you I was dyslexic, nine six four two five six two zero. And what we want to know is what are the biggest causes of stress for you? So anything you enter is confidential. We don't know who's entered it. But what we'll do is have a little look at what the most common causes are, are in the room. So it could be things like <laughs> workflow, it could be clients, it could be anything. So I'm going to put the code, I'm going to type it in here so that I can change the screen. So www.menti. Dot com and the code number is nine six four two five six two zero. Okay, so I have put this in the chat. It's a bit like um 
at, at Ant and Deck on a Saturday night is if you're watching this on replay, do not enter because your vote will not be counted. So this is for live participants only. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the results. So we should now be starting to see the results. Um, interesting. OK, so we've got HMRC. Woo, everyone's favourite. Client mails. Family, workload, clients, staff, colleagues, workload, client expectations, um, the information, the delays that they are causing, the number of emails. So there's quite a lot of things. Uh, child care and working hours. There's quite a lot of similarities there, aren't there? There's different, um, you've got your workload side of things from a business perspective but also your family as well so if we close this one down that can give us an idea I think first of all you're not alone everyone feels the same I think sometimes especially if you are the business owner or you think in an entrepreneurial way that you are involved in someone's business it can be the loneliest planet in the world and I think that loneliness can also be quite stressful when you've got no one to share with so today is, um, you know, should help you to feel that you are not alone. So let's have a wee look and have a look at what things we can do to help help resolve some of these issues, because that would be good. Who Give me a little yes. Who would like to be able to resolve some of these issues? Can't promise HMRC, but if you want to get some, um, now Re Lee has raised his hand. Let's have a wee look. Have you got any questions? Let's see. There's two attendees have raised their hand. Um, if you've got a question, have you got a question, Lee? Do you want to unmute and ask the question? Nope. Kath, have you got a question? If you want to put the questions, you can put them in the chat. I can pick them up from there. Nope, no questions. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, sometimes, in fact, we could maybe even do a prize on this one, Jonathan, couldn't we? I think there'd be a copy of Smash It could be sent to the winner. Who can tell me what metathesiophobia is? Anybody know metathesiophobia? That is a big word for a dyslexic, believe me. Metathesiophobia. First one that can type me the answer in the chat can win a copy of Smash It, The Art of Getting What You Want. Send you an electronic copy. Anybody know? Nobody know? Are we all shy? Okay, no winners then. I'll keep the copy myself. Uh, the answer is actually the fear of change. And I think when it comes to the fear of change, that that's one of the things that can cause stress. We worry, don't we? So if we have a look, um, the calf it says, a phobia that causes people to avoid changing their circumstances due to being extremely afraid of the unknown, cheated and used Google. Uh, no price, but um, we can maybe get you something, calf. But it's really important because if we look at um, business and the evolution of business, it changes all the time. Also, let's have a look at that from, you know, we look at what causes you stress, but making tax digital for your clients. Mm. So again, it's the sometimes the stress adds, um, it comes from your clients, it comes from them not hitting their deadlines, but they've got metathesiophobia. And that has a knock-on effect on you because if everyone does the tax return at the, the same time or are late, that puts you under pressure. Um, David says he is a different beast. He loves change as long as he can see why. And I think that's so important. But again, a lot of this comes to mindset, doesn't it? Because with a growth mindset, you do love change. But a lot of it, your clients will have a fixed mindset and they'll be like, oh, I don't know why they're changing the tax. We've always done it that way. And that's where that fear comes from. So, you know, how can we stop? Because sometimes, again, it was interesting with HMRC coming up in that, that list. Can we control HMRC? I know that you'll be laughing as you watch this. But a lot of the time we focus on things that we can't control. So one of the tips that we work with on our clients is really the situation. So making tax digital is a, is a great example, isn't it? Can we change that situation? No. Can your clients change that? No. But a lot of angst and a lot of worry and a lot of stress 
is coming around making tax digital. So I think it's looking at this, again, a lot of you will be process driven. So this situation in the flow chart, um, can I control it? And it's the voice in our head that sometimes it adds to that stress level. So that voice is telling us like, oh, this is happening, that's happening, we can't manage all these. And that's internally setting your heart rate up and, and also your stress level. So can you control the situation? If the answer is no, you just have to park it because a lot of your time will be focusing on the things you can't control. If the answer is yes, so some of you put workload, some of you put work-life balance, some of you said client emails, those kind of things, actually, you can control that. You just need to have a strategy in place. And that's what we're going to cover today is looking at some of those strategies that can actually help you manage your, your time, your efficiency, and that being in control will help reduce stress. So hopefully that makes sense. If that makes sense, can you give me a little yes in the chat so that I know you're all still with me? Are you all still here? Give me a yes in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Erica saying yes, yeah, great, all makes sense. Thank you, Lee, thank you. Um, what we will do, if there are any questions, I'll take them at the end because I think then we can maybe, uh, I can answer them individually. But this is your sort of first takeaway is concentrate and working in this flow chart. Can I, uh, David's almost asleep. Oh no, uh, am I that, am I that, am I that dull? <laughs> okay, um, what if people don't send books in on time? So again, I think this is really interesting because a lot of this is how you manage your clients and how you communicate with them. So we're going to look at that in this section. How can we get them to think in a timely fashion? In fact, it's actually called Alison Edgar's Big Balls. And David, hopefully that's woken you up now. My techniques on Alison Edgar's Big Balls. So let's go back to the mindset side of things because this is also overwhelming. We do that, don't we? We have that conversation. I'm so stressed. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overworked. I'm so out of control. And again, that's not, it might physically come out your mouth. You might say that, but it starts here. It does start between our ears when we have this thought and it's, it, 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 that's what causes the stress. It comes from our brain. Then what happens is actually, we do feel quite anxious and that's where, you know, we breathe, we, you know, we don't breathe properly. We don't sleep very well. And again, that perpetuates and then we can become quite irritable. We can blame the clients. We can blame. We can become quite argumentative. Oh, they never send their books in on time. And, oh, I told them a hundred times that they should have done that. And they don't listen. And again, it's all quite negative, isn't it? And I think when we feel, um, train your clients, definitely. And oh, Richard, this is you. So this is right. Richard, I'm talking right to camera. I'm talking right to you. But you are not the only one. We all feel like this. This happens to everyone every single day. And this is why I think during um, stress month, it's really important because it, it raises awareness. It helps companies like Accountancy Manager to help people that are in this situation. So. The first thing is this, can I control it? I'm not overwhelmed. It's taking that negative into a positive in your brain. And even if, you know, one of the things I talk about is writing it down, you know, even if you take a few minutes to write down the thoughts that are happening, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed, I'm tired, I'm out of control, um, I'm, I'm struggling to balance my family, I'm struggling to make people happy, I am all these things, get them written down. Get them out of here and onto the piece of paper, because what you then have to do, first of all, is actually believe that you are in control. And it sounds easier said than done, but it's got to start from here. So you know what? I am in control. I can do this. Um, and then what then happens is actually you feel more positive. You feel more capable. You feel more organized. And then ultimately you will be smashing it. So I know that that sounds easy, but the first step is you have to look at having a growth mindset. You have to have that positivity to make those changes. 
because that feeds into that metathesia phobia because ultimately everyone in the room and everyone watching on replay if you weren't feeling overwhelmed or stressed you wouldn't be watching this webinar and if that is you then something has to change so that today that's the big step is something has to change uh kath says i can't remember the last time a client sent their books in on time um, uh, automation has helped, but it's still making hundreds of phone calls. I've started to stop bending over backwards for clients. Kathy, we're going to talk about this. Um, and a lot comes to behaviours, which we'll talk about as well. But I've already, I've already closed my year end off. My year end finished on the 31st of March. The VAT has already been submitted. And the books are ready to, to go in. Literally, I've got the last sign off. So it is possible to control your clients, but um, I'm going to explain how that works. Uh, David's like, he's putting the prices up. Fear clothes, we would call that in sales. Right, okay. Let us understand your clients a bit better because I think this is the fundamental. So in the chat, has anybody ever done Myers-Briggs, Belbin or DISC? Give me a yes or no. Myers Briggs, Belbin or Disc. David has, Kath has. Anybody else? Yes. D uh, Lee says no. Jackie says yeah. Laura says yes. Belbin. Right. So we've got a bit of a mix, right? So I think if I explain this cross, it will give you a deeper understanding of why some clients are late, so why some clients are half a job harry and why some clients are really frightened of um, making tax digital, okay? So for those, again, we've got a mix in the room, some have, some haven't. So if you've heard all this stuff before, it'll be a great refresher. If you haven't, this is revolutionary in how you manage your clients. So it's based on, again, psychology. A lot of this stuff comes from a psychology background. I'm a practitioner in DISC, D-I-S-C, not like D-I-S-C-O-D-I-S. -I um, and it's based on Carl Jung's psychology. The tool that I use is by William Moulton Marsden, who also invented the lie detector test and the invisible man and wonder woman. So again, a lot comes from the behavioral side. So what I'm going to do, I am hypothetically going to take you back to school and I'm hypothetically going to give you an English test, which will last for 30 minutes, right? Maybe I should have said a maths test, but never mind, an, an English test. And what will happen is in that room, in your school class, you've got different types of behaviours. <laughs> David's stressed thinking about school, but you've got different types of behaviours. So what will happen? I'm going to look at the red behaviour type. So I'm going to isolate the colours, but we're a blend of them all. So the red behaviour type is a task-focused extrovert. So task-focused extrovert red behaviour. So after 20 minutes, they'll put up their hand and go, Miss, Miss, I'm finished. Check me out. I'm a winner. You're all losers. But when the test paper result comes back, ooh, I didn't realise there was another side to that paper. So that'll be the clients. Oh, I'm first finished. I've got my tax return done on the 1st of April. Got the VAT done. Oh, but I forgot to attach on zero the VAT receipts. So that kind of, it's, it's, it's fast, it's done, but the detail isn't always there. So again, I know that I, when I'm talking about this, you're going to be starting to imagine some of your clients and how they behave. Then we move down, still staying in extrovert, but the relationship focused extrovert, the yellow behavior type. And what will happen is after 10 minutes, they'll be like, oh, Jonathan, oh, I love accountancy manager. I love that. Oh, I saw you at GBEA. Alison McCall, can you get back on with the test? Oh, I forgot there was a test. I was busy chatting about GBEA. These are the ones that you're chasing all the time. Oh, is it that time of the year again? I forgot all that. Oh, maybe I should look for that bundle of receipts that I've got under my car in between the driving, you know, pouches in the glove compartment. So again, they talk and they talk and they talk, but they're not focused 
on the task. So can you see already, like just by segmenting this, you're going to have that idea of why they behave like that. So you know they're late. You know they do that. You think, I just don't understand why they can't submit on time. It comes down to this cross. Then we move across into our green behaviour type. We're moving across into the introverts. So we're looking at the relationship-focused introvert. And after 10 minutes, they will notice that Gail's got a headache. Miss, miss, my friend Gail's got a headache. I think I should take her to the nurse. So for the green behaviour type, the headache was more important than the task. Oh, yeah, I was going to get the, um, I was going to get all the receipts done, but oh, I had to help walk my, my child's um, friend's dog to school and didn't get a chance and the green behaviours hate, hate change. They're frightened of it. They also don't like conflict. So when you're chasing them and chasing them, they don't want to let you down. They don't want to let the, be the bookkeeper or the accountant down, but they're too scared to say no because they're scared of any confrontation. So again, you know, these are your clients and these are you. Sometimes these are you. You know, you might put off and, you know, for example, let's say a client is in arrears and you know that they're struggling, but they have to still pay their bill and you might be scared to ask them for that payment. But ultimately, they, you need to pay you, otherwise it's going to be a bigger payment that they have to find. So again, looking at those behaviours, it's not just your clients, it's you as well. Then the last colour is the task-focused introvert. Back to our test, right up to the last second, checking the work, double checking the work, did I cross my eye, did I dot my T, because they strive for perfection. And if we have a look, I don't have to ask you if you've ever met someone you don't get on with. Usually it's the diagonal opposite. So if you're here in red, and you want everything now, now, you know, I want to hit all my deadlines, I want to get everything filed, I want to get that done. It's the greens that procrastinate, they can't make decisions, it takes them ages, they're worried about everything that drive you mad. Then if you're here in the yellow, leading the Disney parade, everybody's going to be fun and upbeat. Oh, it's those blues that need all that detail, they drive me bananas. So again, it's those diagonals, and then if you're here in Kerry Sherry Green, it's the pushy, pushy reds. They don't even say please and thank you. They're so rude. They're so demanding. And if you're here in blue and you need all the detail and you need to be introspectively thinking things through so that you get the detail, it's those really annoying yellows that never shut up. So can you see from this um, how important it is to understand A, yourself, be self-aware and be the clients and how this makes sense on why some fail at the right time and others don't. So give me a yes or no in the comments or any questions on this. I can take these ones now. So give me a yes, Alan says yes. Sonia says yes. Um, I think of, oh, Richard, that's interesting, a blue yellow mix because sometimes you're at conflict with yourself. So that's the mix, the diagonals internally are, um, it's quite hard because if you look at, I'll give you an example, Richard, risk assessment. So a blue, yellow internal conflict would mean they want to get up and, oh, dancing on the table, party time, but they would never do that without the risk assessment and checking the table was level. So, um, oh, you meant blue, green. Yeah, and that's, again, if you look, sometimes that um, because you're introverted, you will have clients who just try and push so hard. They'll try and negotiate on price. They'll try and uh, manipulate you. They'll try and find an excuse. And again, it's really interesting. I'm going to give you an example. Um, I was in a conversation the other day with someone who is yellow red, or I would say just yellow, a bit of red, but mainly yellow. And they've not filed. They've had the um, the thing to be struck, struck and off, struck and off, whatever, however you see it. And they're blaming the accountant. It's not their fault. It's the accountant's fault. But I know for a fact the accountant would have followed the process because that's what you guys do. 
and she's ignored the emails or she's just ignored it. And again, it's that that blame side of things as well, doesn't it? But really that understanding. Sometimes if you know the behaviours, you can nip it in the bud. You can actually get things done to try and pull that back. Because if you look at the late filing is something that affects the reputation of that accountant or, or that so to, to try and explain that a yellow is very vocal they've got a big network of people and if they start bad mouthing their accountant some of that mud sticks even though it's not the accountant's fault whereas if that can be managed beforehand and again we'll look at the different strategies to that then that can be dealt with because you understand the behaviors so hopefully that helps um Blue green again. That's normal, really, for your profession. That that's you know you would really want somebody in your field that has got that high level. Um, Jackie says, "Looks like we need different communication styles." And the, yes, Jackie, we do, we do, we do. And again, sometimes when things aren't going according to plan, right? We dig deep into our basic behaviour, how we are. So for me, uh, I've got a an amazing accountant, amazing, because she talks my language. So she doesn't bombard me with gobbledygook accountancy words that I don't understand. But when an accountant or a bookkeeper is under stress, they go into their natural habitat, which makes it worse because it's harder to bond with that client. I have two communications, but I think David's a red carrot and stick. Okay, so how do you adapt? And I think this is so interesting because we teach this not only um, in, in face to face, we can do it on an email. Like basically, I can tell from an email the behavior type, somebody's LinkedIn profile, I can tell the behavior type. And it then means I adapt my communication to their behavior style. So, and it's about that adaption. So, how do we adapt? So, let's say again, quite a few of you have said that you are in green and blue. So the first thing is that on the diagonal, how does a green behavior adapt to a red? So I think this is how do you get the best out of this relationship? And it works in real life. You know, we talked about family life, like really knowing this in your personal life makes a huge difference as well. So be direct. I mean, it's quite interesting with the greens because how do you identify a green? Well, they usually lead with, I'm really sorry to bother you. So they apologize first of all and again with a red behavior it's a bit like a shark to blood you go there's a green and they go in for the jugular it kind of makes them worse so again if you're in the green corner and you're looking to get the best out of a relationship with the red be direct and certain I am contacting you for this purpose or this reason no I'm sorry to bother you because you're not really and again it throws the balance of the relationship off don't waffle or hesitate so they might communicate with you in, bu in bullet points and your natural would be how was your weekend how's the dog how's the family and again they they just they don't even see that in an email they don't even listen to that they just want to cut to the chase so it's not that you change your personality because it's not about your personality it's how you behave and it's about how you behave to the individuals rather than how you want to be treated really you treat them the way that they want to be treated follow the pace so again it's that pace that they want to go at but you've got to be really careful because sometimes their pace will miss the detail whereas if you I call it leading the dance you know we, we look at that that sometimes the red want to do the tango but you in the number space you need them to do more of a waltz but so you can control that by the language that you use and again that comes back to that thought process right okay I you know before I have this call I know this guy can be quite abrupt to the point what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead the dance and then that'll make you feel more in control and then you'll get the results that you want from that client and that reduces your stress watch for impatience so again this is an interesting from a, a, a people viewing perspective that a lot of the time, like I'll watch people and the Reds have got a short um, attention, not attention span, but a, a, a short focus span. And you can feel if it's going off because they, they go, 
So listen for that noise because it means you're off piste with them and it, things have gone in a different direction and then propose the options clearly. So does that make sense? Has anybody got a question about adapting to reds? I know that we're obviously doing a sort of whistle stop tour of DISC, but we only have an hour. I could, I could honestly, I could talk to you about this for a week at least. Any questions? No questions? Okay. So the net, oh, we have, uh, yes, especially as I'm not, cause you are not a red, not a red. Um, okay, so the next one, we, how can I stop being more red? Kath, I'm going to come to the next part. So let me do yellow and then I'll come round to green because I think that you can actually win them over by, by leading the dance the way they want the dance to be led. So you can still be in control. It's to do with the tone, the pace, the gesturing and how you deliver. So I'll, I'm coming to that in a second. So, um, and again, I'd imagine quite a lot of you in the room are um, blue behavior type because you have to be because of the, the, the industry really. So, but a lot of the time it's about, um, asking them questions so if you I mean not the normal way that we would communicate to try and get the information from clients is open questions but the difficult thing you've got with a yellow behavior type they'll go on and go well you don't understand I've been on holiday you don't understand oh, I've been in such a flat because this has happened that and you and you're like I just really want the detail so try and condense the way you ask a question by putting the answer in and and say so you're going to have that to me by Friday is that correct and it's still polite but you're actually gleaning the information from them by reverse engineering the answer and then doing it as a closed question and again it's interesting sometimes um if we have a look sorry let me move that across I've just been in the chat um it's it's that expressiveness so you never be fake don't ever fake it you know that phrase freak it till you make it don't but actually no matter what your behavior color a smile lifts the tone and it actually lifts the tone of your voice but sometimes people forget to smile so I think it's that smile not fake smile just smiling and it really helps to lift don't give them too much detail. You can't, th th that just makes them worse and that'll just make them take no action. And then they'll dig deeper in their dory the fish, just keep swimming, what were we swimming to? So don't, you know, you have to bite size chunks. And if, again, you know, we talk about adaption. Sometimes if an adaption is an adaption too far, then that's not your ideal client. We're going to look at that as we go through because this sometimes will cause you the stress. And tell them stories, like again, not like Jack and Ori tell a story, but actually I've got a client in the hair and beauty industry and what was happening is they nearly lost the salon because they didn't file in time. So what I really want to do is we want to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. And, you know, how, do you, how does that sound to you? you know, are we on board? Are we going to make sure we file on time to make sure your business is safe? Yes, bookkeeper accountant, we are going to do that. So again, really um, honing it in in small chunks. Right, um, Kathy, I feel like I'm singing this one specifically for you. If this was an Adele concert, this one's dedicated to Kath. Um, so already my tone, my pace slows down. You know, don't push them. The more that you drill harder, do, 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 they're kind of not building, they're, they're kind of not bonding. And sometimes it can, they can be scared. They can be scared of that, that red behavior type. And what they do, the green behavior types, they just shell up. You know, you'll be, you'll be asking them for information, you'll be phoning them and they'll ghost you because they don't want that conflict. So I think it's that reassurance. And, and one of the things, there's a word there, genuine care for their needs. So what the reds tend to do, they tend to ask a question, all oh, right, so how is the dog? And they say, oh, the dog, that, and they go, right, anyway, back to work, back to the business. And you're not really genuinely listening or you're not really genuinely caring. So it's that genuine point. If you ask the question about their family or their dog or their business, you've got to really listen to what the answer is. And, and I think it's kind of asking for their commitment in a friendly way. So what we can do then, 
just to make sure that you've got, you know, we don't want you missing this deadline because then that affects your workload, your stress levels. So how about we work together and come up with a plan of what specifically we need and when, and we'll make sure we do it together, together. How does that sound? Kath, hopefully that helps. Um, I don't know if there'll be that many yellows in the room because of the industry that we're talking about, but if that is you and you're leading the Disney parade and Dory the Fish and Half a Job Harry and all over the place, it's really be prepared. Oh, this must be music to the blues ears. Slow down, listen, take notes, you know, and I think it's interesting um, in your industry the number of times you'll have meetings with different behaviour colours and they're not taking any notes, how are they going to be able to take, take action if they're not taking notes? So again, it's really managing that situation. And then, you know, provide, if you're a yellow to a blue, provide lots of detail. So David, you are a rainbow colour, but all colours, right? So this is, I kind of segmented everything because it gives you an overview, but everybody has all the colours, but we usually have some colours higher than others. We usually blend on an axis. So I'd imagine quite a few of you in the room would be a purple, high red, high blue, specifically because of the industry that you're in. And then also you probably, a lot of you will be blue green, again, because of the industry that you are in. And then, you know, are there a lot of you that are yellow green in your industry? Maybe not, but your customers are. And we saw from the beginning of the slides, they're the ones that are causing you stress. Literally, it's how you manage them that are causing that stress. Does that make sense? Give me a yes or a no. Give me a yes or a no, if that's making sense. Make sure you're all still with me. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Lee says yes, Jan says yes, Kath says yes, Pat says yes. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Yes, Richard, yeah. Still with you, Laura's still with me. Excellent. Uh, how's, the, how's the dog? <laughs> um, let me answer that question. Hovis is fine. Right, okay. So I have a question before we go on to this slide. Who was brought up to treat other people the way that you want to be treated? So whose parents or guardians are you treat other people? Me, me, everyone's saying me. Yes, Alan says yes, absolutely. Yes, Caroline says yes. Well, you treat everyone with respect and value, but don't treat them the way that you want to be treated behaviour-wise. Treat them the way that they want to be treated. And if you can work that formula out, that will reduce your stress. It will help you to manage your workflow. It will help you to know when to plan, when to program, just based on the behaviours. So hopefully that made sense. So the next thing, let's move on to the next thing. The Eisenhower, the, the Eisenhower quadrant. Who's familiar with the Eisenhower quadrant? Give me a yes or no in the chat. Eisenhower quadrant. Oh, no, quite a few no's, quite a few yeses. No, oh, okay, right, you're going to love this. Right, how, you know, looking back at the start of the goals of the session of what the things that are causing stress, your work-life balance, your family, the clients, again, I'm not even getting involved in HMRC, but there's a lot of stuff that comes down to your time. So if we look, the Eisenhower quadrant is around important and urgent, uh, so crises, people not filing their tax returns on time, people not having their VAT in on time, you know, those things. So it's tough, isn't it? Because a lot of that, those things are not in your control. How can you file if you haven't got the information? That's where the frustration comes. Oh, Richard, I'm coming to Trello in a few minute. Um, not important, not urgent again. And if you look, it's how people deal with the tasks at the right time. So some of you may have a linear to-do list, right? So to-do list is all in a line. And that not just you, because we've identified it's your clients that are causing the stress. So if we have a look that, that, you know, human nature, they will do the things that they like to do first. And again, if you look at a green, yellow behavior type is anything to do with tax, making tax digital, bookkeeping, is that what they love? No, they're relationship focused. They'd rather be talking to customers, doing other jobs. 
So your bit is not that important to them because they are so focused on relationships. <gasps> right, I'm looking for a drum roll, please. This is really hard to communicate. How can you say to your client, oh, this is urgent and important to me. This is not important, not urgent. So what I've done is I've translated it into, I did promise you this, Alison Edgar's Big Balls. And it is just about to be, it's going through its trademark. So fingers crossed it'll be trademarked any day. So matters with urgency. So even if you look at a, a linear to-do list, this is why it doesn't work because you don't know what the biggest tasks are. So if we look, we talk about basketballs. If anybody's ever had a basketball in the face, it is very sore. If anybody, um, anybody has tried to juggle more than one basketball, you can't really. Two basketballs is the maximum. And that's what your to-do list is like. So it's mar matters with urgency. Um, it is interesting, but it is, it's very clean. It is basketballs, tennis balls, ping pong balls. But you should have seen the trademark lawyer when we trademarked it. That was quite funny. Um, so then tennis balls. So those are things that aren't as urgent, but if you leave them, they will become a basketball. And then the ping pong balls are the smaller tasks. So let's look, let's look at tax returns. Let's look at VAT returns, right? So, and let's go back and let's go back in the D. Let's go back in the D to the trades, guys, who literally just would have had a shoebox full of receipts at the end of the year or at the end of the month. And again, that might still happen. I don't really work much with the trades, but I can remember when I worked in corporate sales, we were we were dealing with this kind of customer and everything was lastminute.com. So the accountant getting that shoebox, like for, for the client, for the trades guy, let's say, that shoebox of receipts was just his ping pong ball. And then it became the tennis ball. <laughs> and then it became the basketball. But can you see it's the disparity of the balls? Now we talked about um, we talked about getting the deadlines done. We talked about getting people getting that information to you at the right time. And this is what causes your stress. This is what's causing your stress is your basketball is to get everything filed on time. Right? That's your job. That's your industry. Everything's got to be filed. But getting that information to the client is their ping pong ball. So again, and it sounds quite bizarre, but using this sort of technique and actually using this, my clients include Discovery Channel, Sky, EasyJet, um, WH Smith, European Commission, and they are all using this technique to be able to communicate internally with their clients and also about the, their clients internally and externally. Maybe not using that terminology, but do, really explaining what it means. So coming back to time, we talked about work-life balance. So there's a couple of things that we implement. And I think that you're the leaders. You know, we're, we're talking about your stress level. So you can actually influence your clients by educating them on techniques like this, um, especially ones who are relationship focused and not task focused, that this understanding of how they manage it will affect how you manage your stress and theirs because it's not ultimately if they're on if they're coming in in a timely fashion then the, you can submit in a timely fashion but by using a technique like this that will help them to understand why they have to do everything in that time frame so we use um, rather than a linear to-do list I think it was it Richard that you mentioned Richard or David mentioned Trello so what we do is we've got a Trello, and again, you can you can really help your clients to implement this. So Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, is a free tool. So it doesn't cost you anything. And what they can do is they can set up the boards, a board, which is a basketball, tennis ball, ping pong ball. And then the fourth one is, yay, it's done. So you know that wonderful satisfaction that you get um, when you've taken something off? Well, actually, you can see that happening. So if you can explain to the client and actually you might this might be your basketball because fixing a, a sink or, you know, covering holiday plan or covering whatever. But if you can help them elevate why that's so important and get them to submit at the right time, it will then really help you reduce your uh, reduce your uh, stress. Um, David uses a practical management tool called 
FYI docks. It comes from Australia. Um, this offers a Trello style board and it's fantastic. Um, uh, they do that on Accountancy Manager as well. So even better using it on Accountancy Manager because obviously they're sponsoring today and they have got the tools that will help you to manage that stress level. So what I would say is it doesn't matter what you use, just don't do things in a line. And when you actually are using basketballs, tennis balls and ping pong balls, when you communicate, um, when you communicate the, the, the tasks that need done, you can actually explain it's the disparity of balls and it makes it easier for the client to understand where you're coming from. So I think that's that again, you can use whatever you want, but we've tried to come up with other things that, you know, traffic lights and it just doesn't work because a traffic light in the face doesn't work. Uh, whereas a basketball, you can see it's a big task and you can see then the size of the task. So for example, if your VAT quarter um, starts on the 1st of January, January, February, March, that sounds about right, doesn't it? So um, updating your Zero or your Sage or your um, QuickBooks, like in January, it's not it's not the end of the world. In February, it's a tennis ball. And then by the end of March, when you need to submit, you've got to have that expenses done. You've got to have your invoicing done. You've got to have the bank reconciliation done. So on the 31st of March, if you've not even started to input your receipts, that is going to be a basketball in the face because it has to be submitted and it has to be paid by, in my head, I think the middle of April. But again, you guys know better than me. Um, but an, another another way for us that we do internally and we work with companies on is ready for this one. An empty inbox policy. Who in the room has got an empty inbox policy? That means that every day you get the balloons from Microsoft Office to tell you that you've got nothing in your inbox. Me, David says me. Yes, Paul says me. Not a chance. <laughs> Uh, what a dream I wish no I wish so ah, again I'm going to pick you up that I wishers because that comes from that mindset so is that an I wish that never going to happen or I will is that positive talk because I promise you I promise you and we've got it in the whole company and it doesn't mean that we do the um, it doesn't mean that we do the tasks every day. There's still tasks that need done, but every task goes in to, again, can go into accountancy manager, or for us, it's on our Trello board. Is this a basketball, a tennis ball, or a ping pong ball? You know, does that, does that email need responded to right away? Or actually, could that be wait until tomorrow and then we can respond to it then? Or is it something that like a request for me to be on a podcast, for example? Well, that's a ping pong ball, so that can be responded to whenever. But really segmenting and compartmentalising and just that communication. Um, I insist that an inbox is cleared and moved. Again, Kat, look, oh, it's hilarious. Kath, I'm going to read this out loud. I insist that an inbox is cleared and moved to a to-do list um, AM. Right, red behaviour type, right, Kath? Like, I'm, I'm on you. I feel that. But And a lot of people who are going, oh, I wish, oh, well, that's not going to happen, comes from the behaviour type blend. So you can see from that why it is so important to understand yourself and other people. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's where really understanding your clients that, that bit better makes a big difference. So we, we sort of started off with this. I, I, I will, you know, I'm, I'm not a great singer, but it comes down to the gambler, you know, and what causes your stress? We know that from the first one, the clients, a lot of the answers were the clients, the emails, and it is not every client is a good client. It is. It's Kenny Rogers, the gambler. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. So I believe that you do call clients. Honestly, I do believe that that's not a bad thing. Not every client is a good client. And if they are causing you stress, and, and again, now that you've got this knowledge on the behaviours and on the balls, that if they're really not complying to how you are running your business, it's you've got to play the gambler and really work out who are the good clients and who you need to walk away from. 
Um, I think there's a few wee chats in here about the inboxes. I work with better with a clear inbox, reach behavior. So again, I believe that, you know, one of the things, the takeaway from this section, are they causing you stress? Are they going to change? What's their mindset? Oh, I'm always done it this way. I'm not going to change. Uh, are they going to adapt to making tax digital? Have you got the capacity, the space, or is it time to, to play the gambler? Um, so the other thing, I'm going to finish on this, and then we have got a few minutes for Q&A. Um, confidence to change, because I believe that confidence is something that is really important when it comes to making changes. And I think it's, again, it's not just your confidence, but really working with the clients on their confidence to change, because you're in this room for a reason. It's a stress webinar. There are points, some of you are stressed and you're looking for coping mechanisms to reduce that stress. And with that coping mechanism, it comes from the metathesiophobia and it's making change. So you might be thinking, oh, I'd love an empty inbox policy. Oh, but then I don't know where to start. Oh, and again, it's that, can you control having an empty inbox? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Do you want to? That's another issue. Are you confident enough to make that change? So I would like to introduce you to my Auntie June. All right. And now Auntie June is in her 80s. And she came down to visit. We live in Wiltshire, despite the accent. She came down from Scotland to visit. And in her 80s, she decided she would like to do something different. She wanted to take a selfie. She'd seen people taking these selfies and she wanted to do that. So you can see Auntie June's selfie is not <laughs> the most focused photo in the world. But she took the chance. She had a growth mindset and she took the picture because if you don't take the first step, the first chance, you don't make that change. So it was a bit chilly and I said to Auntie June, I'll let you um, borrow my, my pink jacket. As you can see, I wear a lot of pink. She said, oh, and I, she put on the jacket. I said, Auntie June, you look great in that jacket. And she said, Hen, I look great in anything. So it's that belief in yourself that you can reduce your stress, that you can do things differently, and actually that you can be confident enough to make change and kick metathesiophobia to the curb. Um, she did it. Well done to Auntie June. She is amazing. Um, and she's still, she's in a nursing home now, and I still go up and see her. And um, I took my MBE up. She's there's wee pictures with Auntie June, not, not like out of focus ones. We've got some really nice ones. David wants an Auntie June. She loves it when I talk about her as well, by the way. Um, so I'm hoping, thank you again to Accountancy Manager for sponsoring today. And is there any questions? I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Let's take this one down. There we go. Well, well Alison, I just thought that was, that was fantastic. Thank you very much for coming and speaking to the audience today. I think, obviously, looking at the content that, you, that you've just been talking about, it makes you think and reflect about yourself a lot, and also, of course, about the people that we're working with as well. And I think just by looking at the, at the chat box, you can see how active it, it, it's been. And really, it's, it's obviously a, a subject that has resonated with the audience. So thank you very much for that. You are very welcome. And yeah, if there's any questions, we've still got a wee bit longer anyway. Um, any ideas from somebody with ADHD and several, um, well, I'm dyslexia, and I'm, I could maybe border on that, um, beginning to think and in the wrong profession. Oh, Caroline, you're not in the wrong profession. That's Again, that's a mindset thing. So I, I think one of the things, if you look, um, I don't know whether you're working on your own or whether you've got a team, but teamwork makes the dream work. And that's why I think, you know, the, everybody's got strengths. Everybody's got something that they are fantastic at. But maybe when you look at expanding the team or who you work with, or if you're interviewing, looking to fill those gaps because everybody has a strength. If you look at the um, neurodiversity, that uh, for me, that's what makes me who I am. And when it came to writing the two books, I mean, there's a great example. I did not write them on my own. Like Kaya helped me on the first book through the pandemic. She came back and helped me with the second book. And, you know, I credit her in the books. They're my books. I wrote them, but I had help. And that's OK. You can, you know, you don't have to do everything yourself. Um, oh, Caroline's on her own. 
do, but I, I, what I would say then, look at the strengths. And if there's anything like, so I don't know if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper, is there anything that you can outsource to make your life a lot easier? And that'll help your productivity. Um, Alison, we've, we've had a question come in that which I, I can take. It's from Laura yeah. saying, w will the recording be sent around? Yes, it will be. Everybody that's uh, registered for today's session will be sent the recording this afternoon. So, uh, so watch out for your inbox. That will appear very shortly. I'm laughing at David's comment. I'm on my own. No one wants to work with me. <laughs> Love that one. I, I, there's, there's a great comment here about uh, maybe including Belbin in, in, in the onboarding process. I think that, that, that would be excellent. Just try and outline right from the beginning of the relationship what, how, what type of client they're going to be and how best mm -hmm. to deal with them. What a, what a great suggestion that is. Yeah, I think it comes back to that communication, doesn't it? So, you know, the, the higher the level of communication, the more you can get things done the way that you want to do because you can know how you need to adapt your behaviour to get what you want. I mean, the, the book is called Smash It, The Art of Getting What You Want. And ultimately, that's getting what you want reduces your stress, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay, well, it um, doesn't look like there's any, any more questions coming through now. So perhaps we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll um, bring it to a close. Alison, thanks very much again. Um, really, really appreciate it. I think that's been excellent for, for the, all the attendees today. And thanks everyone to, for all the attendees to tune in. Obviously, as I say, here I am. We're, we're trying to deliver more content, but give you additional value above and beyond just the, the software that we provide. And it's great to see so many people attend and be so active during the session as well. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thank and thank you again for having me. If anybody wants to catch up, I'm on LinkedIn. So just find me, Alison Edgar, on LinkedIn. Excellent. Okay, everybody, have a great afternoon and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Now.